At the start of 2020, the US decided to drop China from its currency manipulator list, something that may be seen as more of a symbolic gesture as the trade war continues to de-escalate. However, at the same time, the US added Switzerland to the manipulator list, leading to the Swiss franc hitting a three-year high. But what is a currency manipulator and why is this important? Here's your three minute explainer. The term currency manipulator is a label the US Treasury gives to countries it sees as engaging in unfair currency activity with the intention of gaining some sort of trade advantage. In an ideal world, exchange rates will be set by the relative demand for those currencies. For example, if country A is selling a lot of products to other countries, it means other countries will want to buy the currency of country A to purchase those products with. With this increase in demand, it means the price of that currency will rise just like any other asset would. As the price of that currency rises, it makes the products relatively more expensive since the countries will need to pay more of their own currencies to obtain country A's currency. This may eventually lead to a reduction in demand and then the price of the currency reducing. With this in mind, if a country's currency is lower or weaker, it means their products will be more competitive around the world since they are relatively cheaper than similar products in countries with a stronger currency. So for example, in the case of Switzerland, its currency, the Swiss franc, is considered a safe haven asset. This means it's in demand from investors around the world who want to hold it to avoid risks elsewhere. Due to this demand, it means Switzerland would have a strong currency and this may mean its own products and services are less competitive around the world as they are more expensive compared to those of other countries. But the US thinks that Switzerland is taking action to avoid its currency strengthening. As I mentioned before, it should be that the exchange rates are self-correcting. When a currency strengthens, demand drops and the currency then weakens, and vice versa. However, sometimes governments or central banks may take matters into their own hands through currency manipulation to gain a competitive advantage. The main way a country would look to manipulate its currency is by selling its own currency and buying foreign currencies. By doing this, they can keep their own currency weak relative to the other currencies as they would be manipulating the supply and demand balance of their own currency. This means countries that have a trade surplus, meaning they export more than they import, can benefit from that while manipulating their currency to make sure it doesn't strengthen and lead to the surplus reducing. Likewise, if a country imports more than it exports and therefore has a trade deficit, it may be in its interest to keep its currency stronger so that it can purchase products from other countries relatively cheaply thanks to its strong currency. Although the buying and selling of the country's currency is the main way to manipulate it, there are also other methods that are a little less obvious and may manipulate the currency just as a byproduct, such as quantitative easing, which is when a central bank expands the money supply. There are many other reasons a country may want to engage in currency manipulation and different ways for it to do so. But since President Trump made the trade deficit a big theme during his first term in office, any countries engaging in manipulative activity that may impact that have been and will be under the spotlight. If you found this three minute explainer useful, hit the thumbs up button to let us know and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on the next ones. Thanks for watching.